Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the Bikri me mechanism, which is named after William Bikri, who is a Nobel laureate, a Canadian Nobel laureate from Victoria, British Columbia. Bikri's original work was in the context of financial assets. However, we are going to be talking about allocating one piece of art. The story again is going to be that Anna inherited some unwanted piece of art that she doesn't really like, and there are three people that might be interested in getting it. Bob, Charlie, and David. Let us assume that none of them plans to resell the object and therefore their value for it is determined by how much they like it and how much utility they would derive uh, from having it in their houses or in their offices. Given this assumption, it is natural to also assume that this information is private. Only I know how much I like this specific piece of art. Okay, so we can map this into a social choice problem where the alternatives are to give the object to Anna, Bob, Charlie, and David and their values are given in this table. So we are assuming that Charlie's value is the greatest, he values the, the piece of art 10, Bob 7, and David 4, in which case the efficient thing to do would be to give the object to Charlie. The problem is that in order to figure out what is the efficient outcome, we need to know the values of the different individuals. And so we need a mechanism to get them to tell us what their values are. That's where the Bikri mechanism will come in hand. We actually already studied this mechanism in class with a different name. We called it the sealed bid second price auction. Now, in general context, the Vickery mechanism does not always coincide with the sealed bid second price auction, but when we are auctioning a single object, they are the one and the same thing. They are a direct mechanism, and let me remind you the rules. Each buyer makes a, a report of a, of a number, a bid, which is supposed to be equal to their value. The object is allocated to the buyer with the highest bid, and the winner pays the second highest bid to the seller. So in, in this specific example, the highest bid would come from Charlie, if everybody bids truthfully, uh, would be 10. The second highest bid would be Bob's bid, which is a bid of 7. Therefore, Charlie would get the artwork and would pay $7 to Anna. Which means that if everybody bids truthfully, then the victory mechanism would in this case give us the efficient outcome. Now, as we talked about in class, uh, the Vickery mechanism it will give us the efficient outcome and is incentive compatible, not just in this setting, but in many general settings. Now, this is not the case in all settings. There are going to be two important assumptions that we'll discuss today with more detail. Valuation should be private and there should be no externalities. Before I talk about those assumptions, I would like to go over the, the argument explaining why the second price auction is incentive compatible. Now, we already did this in class a long time ago, so if you remember how to do this and if you understood it the first time we did it, you can skip this section and fast forward to 5 minutes and 5 seconds. In order to make our argument, we are going to need one piece of notation. Let P denote the highest bid of the opponents of player I. From I's perspective, P is going to play two roles. First of all, player I is going to win the auction, if and only if his bid is greater than P. Secondly, in that case, um, the second highest bid would be exactly P, and therefore that would be the price that player I would have to pay. With that notation in mind, we can look at the table to see why player I would never want to bid a number MI equal to B I hat, which is strictly greater than, than their true value. There are three cases to consider. If P is greater than B I hat, then whether the player overbid BI hat or bid truthfully, um, player I would not win the auction and, and their utility would be zero. If P is really small, then the player would win the auction in either case, and again, the utility would be the same because the price is not determined by your own bid, but is determined by the second highest bid. The last case is when P is strictly greater than my true value, but strictly less than my report. In that case, I would win if I overreport. I would not win if I bid truthfully. But in case I win, the price that I would pay would be greater than my value, and therefore my utility would be negative. So, in the, in the only case in which overbidding and bidding truthfully give different utilities, bidding truthfully gives a greater utility, and therefore it weakly dominates overbidding. In the homework, I ask you to show that underbidding is also weakly dominated by telling the truth which means that in the context of, of a single object, object auction with private values, the Vickery mechanism is incentive compatible. 
All right, let's go back to discussing the important assumptions. One crucial assumption is that different players have very different values for the object being auctioned, and that is not always the case. For example, governments often auction the right to look for and extract oil in different plots of land. Uh, the graph that you're seeing is from an actual auction that took place in the Gulf of Mexico um, in 2018. The bidders in these kind of auctions are typically very homogeneous, uh, but the plots of lands are not. They have different amounts of oil, and in some plots of land the oil is very easy to extract, and in other plots of land it is very difficult to extract. So, the true profitability of each of these plots of land depends on the characteristics of the plot itself and not on the characteristics of the bidders. In these kind of situations, we say that we have common values as opposed to private values. In the specific context of drilling rights, it is also fair to assume that companies don't know exactly how much oil there is in each plot of land. However, each company might still have some private information because it might have access to some specific data sets or might run its own test to get an idea of how much oil there might be in different plots. There is an interesting phenomenon that arises in these kind of scenarios. If you place a weed and you win the auction, that typically means that other people place lower bids, which typically means that the private information that they had was not very favorable for the field. So, upon learning that you won, you should actually revise your beliefs and become more pessimistic. This is known as the winner's course. And, as we shall see, it implies that the victory auction is not incentive compatible in common value settings. To understand why, let us look at some specific example. Suppose that the oil field either has a value of 100 or a value of equal to zero, each with probability one half. Now, suppose also that each bidder can run an independent test on whether there is oil in this field, but this is a noisy test. If there is oil, the test always comes positive, but sometimes you get false positives. With a small probability of 1%, you get a false positive even if there is no oil. So, let us, do, let us use Bayes' rule to figure out if you get a positive result in the test, what would be the probability that you assign to there being oil. Uh, in order to use Bayes' rule, we have to, to look at the probability of there being oil and getting a positive test divided by the probability of getting a positive test whether there is oil or not. Given our assumptions, the probability of oil and a positive test is just one half, and uh, we could also get a negative test with probability 0 0.01, uh, with probability one half, if there is no oil. So we do the algebra and we get a posterior belief of 99%. Therefore, if you get a positive result, you should be very confident that there is oil in the field. However, suppose that everybody is bidding truthfully. Then, if you win and somebody else bids zero, you would learn that somebody else had a negative test. Because you never get false negatives, that means that upon winning, you learn that somebody else um, discovered that there is no oil in the field, and therefore the field is completely worthless. A rational agent would take this into account, and therefore would have incentives to underbid, to bid less than whatever is the expected profitability of the, of the field, given the private information that they have. Therefore, if you were to actually run a second price auction with common values, you wouldn't expect firms to be truthful. And uh, in those situations, the big auction it's not going to be the incentive compatible efficient mechanism that we wanted. The other crucial assumption that I would like to talk about today is that there should be no consumption externalities. Let us go back to the auction of this piece of art, uh, but let's, let's change the setup a little bit. Let us assume that um, Charlie and David live in a nice residential area. They are neighbors. This is somewhere in, in Old North in London. And, um, and Charlie, actually, if she buys the painting, she is this, this sculpture, she is planning to display it prominently in her front lawn. Uh, this is a pretty big sculpture, by the way. This is about two feet tall. It's, it's somewhere in a museum in Chicago. And... Um, and, you know, David likes this sculpture, but maybe David wouldn't like to love to have it displayed in the front lawn. You know, it's, it's a scary sculpture. It's weird. 
um, he doesn't want to have to see this er every day when he walks by his house. So we can assume that if Charlie were to buy this paint, uh, this, this culture, then uh, there would be, David would suffer some negative utility uh, from the fact that Charlie would put this culture in, in her front lawn. We call this kind of effect a negative externality from Charlie onto David, and as we shall see, it would also mess up with the performance of the degree auction. So let's give some numbers to it. Let's say that if Charlie gets the painting, there's a minus seven utility for David. So now in order to find out what is the efficient outcome, we need to do a little bit more of work because now we actually have to add up the utilities of different individuals. So if we give the painting to Bob, then the only person with a non-zero utility would be Bob himself and the total sum of utilities would just be seven. If we give the object to Charlie, Anna's utility would be zero, Bob's utility would be zero, Charlie would get a utility of 10, but David would get a utility of minus seven. So the sum of values would be equal to three. Finally, if we give the object of Charlie, the total sum of values would be equal to four, the greatest of these numbers is seven, and therefore the efficient outcome is to give the object to Bob. So now it is no longer efficient um, for Charlie to, to win the object. However, under truth telling, if you are to run a, a second price auction, then Charlie would still get the object. Therefore, in this case, a second price auction if we are to assume truth telling, uh, would be inefficient. Now, we might not want to assume truth telling because the victory auction in the presence of externalities is no longer incentive compatible. We shall see that David has an incentive to over report his type. If he were to report truthfully and other people were also reporting truthfully, then Charlie would win the object, put it in her front lawn, and David's utility would be minus seven. In contrast, if David were to report 11, then he would win the object. In that case, the second highest bid would be Charlie's bid, which is a, a bid of 10. Therefore, the price would be equal to 10. Uh, in that case, David would get a utility of 4 from having the, the sculpture would, and would pay 10 for a total utility of minus 6, which is greater than minus 7. Therefore, the victory auction is not incentive compatible. So what do we do in cases where the victory auction doesn't work well? Well, we use the VCG mechanism, which is short for Vickery, Clark, and Groves, that we are going to study in next class. See you then.